Hey fam, what's up? It's April here. Today I'm here to share with you all of the books that I got in the month of October. I am filming this a little bit early. It is the, what date is it? It is the 27th today, so I could potentially receive some books on Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, the last three days of the month, but I don't have time to film, so we're just gonna film it now. I have a very large stack of books beside me that I'm so excited about. So let's just get into it. They are kind of in categories. The first category being October releases. So first, we finally have Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I went through a massive dilemma trying to get this book. I pre-ordered it with Amazon and they ran out of copies. So I had to cancel my order and order it from the book depository. And then the book depository ran out of copies, but then they got it back in stock. So I finally have it. It does have the sprayed edges, but I have not had time to read it yet. This is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer, which I read in September and absolutely fell in love with. So I'm so excited to finally get to this book when I'm done with my internship. December is going to be the month of reading all of the things and I'm so excited. But anyway, Strange the Dreamer is so beautiful. If you have not read it, I highly recommend you give it a go. It's all about this librarian called Laszlo Strange who is obsessed with this mythical lost city and one day he gets the chance to find out what really happened there. It is so beautiful and so magical and yeah, I just can't wait to read this. Then we have The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. This is the companion novel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and I loved this book so much. I will have my October wrap-up going up next week so you can check out my wrap-up for details but this is a companion series that takes place in the 1700s and it follows two siblings and in this book we follow Felicity who really wants to be a doctor and she's just trying to get accepted into any medical school that will let her in but of course they won't let her in because she's a woman so it's kind of her struggles with that along with her sexuality. It's kind of implied that she's asexual but of course they didn't have that term back then but I absolutely adored this book so much. Five stars. This is not a wrap up. Just go get it. <laughs> then we have Saga Volume 9. <sighs> this is my favourite graphic novel slash comic series. Uh, this broke me. It has a very devastating ending and the author and illustrator are going on a year-long at least hiatus. So I don't know when we're going to get more content in this series, but it's going to be a long wait. How could they just leave it like that? Anyway, yes. Okay, we're moving on. I don't want to talk about it anymore. The next book is What If It's Us by Becky Abutali and Adam Silvera. You may be wondering, well, if you got it this month, where is it? I already sold it because I hated this book. <laughs> I'm as shocked as you are, friends. Ah, uh, yeah was really disappointed by it. You can check out my thoughts in my wrap up when it goes up, but I really did not like it. So we're just gonna move on. Okay. Next we have A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Taha Damafi, which is her first foray into YA realistic fiction, contemporary fiction, and it follows a Muslim teen in the aftermath after 9-11 happens. And that's all I really know, but it's Tahira Mafi, so of course I pre-ordered it, and I can't wait to read this book. I've honestly heard amazing things, and her writing is phenomenal, so I just know there are going to be some amazing lines in here. But I'm going to be underlining like crazy. And then we have my most anticipated book of my entire life, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas the last book in the Throne of Glass series. I have not read this yet because I ran out of time rereading the series. So I'm currently on Queen of Shadows, which is book four. So I have book four, five, six to read before I can actually get to this one. And I probably won't get to it until after I finish my internship, which is really, really upsetting. So I am avoiding the internet at all costs to avoid spoilers. This series is everything to me. It is my favorite series apart from Harry Potter and I can't wait. I I am internally screaming. I don't know if you can tell. Can you tell? Okay moving on to just like random other books that I bought. I bought I think this book came out in September and that is The Lost Queen by Signe Pike. I heard about this from Heather from the Bookables and it just sounded 
like everything I needed. Apparently it's like a mix between Outlander and Camelot. And this book follows a forgotten queen of 6th century Scotland and she's the twin sister of the man who inspired the legend of Merlin. Doesn't that just sound incredible? Again, this is probably a book I will get to in December. I am so excited for it because it just sounds right up my alley. Next, I bought two random Christmas books that I'm planning on reading during the Four Seasons 24 hour readathon that's happening, I think on the 22nd of December. And I only wanna read Christmas books during those 24 hours. So the first one I have is A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig, which is a middle grade Christmassy book, but apparently it is amazing. I love Matt Haig so much. And I've heard that like this book is amazing even for adults. So I can't wait. It's apparently the true story of a father, Nicholas, and I'm excited. And the other one is Carols and Chaos by Cindy Anstey. And this has been said to have like Downton Abbey vibes, but it's set during Christmas time in England in 1817, which is my jam. I love anything set in the 1800s. I'm there, Christmas, yes. Next we have two books that I got from a viewer. We met up and sort of exchanged books and stuff. So first she gave me First We Make the Bees Beautiful by Sarah Wilson. I did have an arc of this at one stage but the finished copy is absolutely stunning and this is a non-fiction book all about anxiety which is me. Seriously if there is one word you could use to describe me it is anxious. <laughs> The end pages hurt my eyeballs, but I am really excited to sort of just pick this up if I'm in a bad place or just, you know, flip through it when I need something. I don't know. <laughs> and the other book is The Cure for Dreaming by Kat Winters. This is apparently like a gothic YA thrillery type of book that is sort of feminist. I'm pretty sure it's historical. So historical, feminist, gothic. Yes, sign me up. Okay, the last section of books are books that were sent to me either by publishers or subscription boxes. So first I got an arc of A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This arc is so pretty. This is a YA Beauty and the Beast retelling. I have heard it is incredible. And this book comes out in Australia on the 1st of February. So again, this will probably be a December or January read. I'm really excited for it. So thank you so much to Bloomsbury for sending this to me. And then the next book is Liberty by Nikki McWatters and this is published by UQ Press and this is a companion novel to Hexen House which is like a witchy YA read. So this follows three young women caught in the battles of their own times. So it follows one woman from 1472, one from 1797 and one in the 1960s. Yeah and apparently it Maria Lewis an author wrote Liberty shows how hard women have fought in small and momentous ways throughout history. So that sounds awesome. Thank you so much to UQ Press. And I got this cute little pin. We love a good pin. And then we have subscription boxes. So this month's Alcrate box, which I have an unboxing for. I will leave it in the corner. We got two books and I cannot believe it. And I have a special code that you can use to get a discount for Alcrate. So I'll leave it in the description for you. But the first book is Pride by Ibi Zaboy, which is a modern day retelling of Pride and Prejudice but the main girl character is Afro-Latino and oh, look at these end papers absolutely stunning I'm a sucker for anything that is Pride and Prejudice related and this I just know is going to be amazing and then we have Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa which I read back in September so I'll leave my September wrap up in the corner but this is an own voices Japanese inspired fantasy it reads just like an anime it's all about this ancient scroll that has been broken into three pieces and if you have the three pieces together and say the prayer that's on the scroll you can summon the great kami dragon and get any wish granted. So the main girl character who is a kitsune, I think that's how you say it, or a kitsune, she has one piece of the scroll and then the other character who is a samurai from the shadow clan, he is under orders to kill anyone who gets in his way of obtaining the pieces of the scroll. So it's really good. And then I got this month's Alcrate Junior box and the book in that box was The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. And this looks absolutely adorable. Look at this art on the back, stunning. This is basically about a train 
that can travel to impossible places. And this main character gets aboard the train and this train can travel to like shipwrecks under the sea, to out of space, like it can travel anywhere. And basically there's a package that needs to be sent to this lady, evil lady in an obsidian tower, but inside the package is a snow globe. And apparently there is a prince trapped in the snow globe who is begging her not to take him to this evil lady. I don't know, it just sounds adorable and magical and fun and I'm here for it. So there you have it, those are all the books that I got in October. I know there's a lot, but I am so excited for all of them. So make sure to let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books or if you plan on reading any of these books, and I will see you soon in a new video. Goodbye!